got a rather packed episode today. Four speakers from the Have Your Say last week at Fall Council. We've got Karina, Brian from the Peacekeepers, Sir Bob Russell, and Simon Collis, a resident who came up with a stunningly good idea that several of us are kicking ourselves we didn't think of ourselves, and we're going to pinch his idea. I'll tell you more about that at the end. Last time Karina discussed 5G, people were on board with what I'd said about net zero, but said we lost all credibility when we started discussing the dangers of 5G. We do live in a very strange world, I know, but it does seem rather bizarre that you can't discuss any concerns you have these days without either being an anti-something or other, or a conspiracy something or other. What's also odd is the number of times we're told something is safe when it isn't, as Karina will mention during her speech. But before she gets going, I'll draw your attention to a couple of things that didn't fit in her speech. Firstly, there's the report in Switzerland of a farmer who had a 5G mast put up in his field of cows, only to find 30 of them were born blind. And yes, sometimes calves are born blind, but not usually 30 in one field. And the only difference was that 5G mask. Anecdotal, some might say, but should we really be risking that? With our unborn babies, it's bad enough the calves are blind for life now. So there are very real safety concerns with 5G. And as we covered in the episode with Ian Jarvis, there's good reasons. So if you haven't seen those episodes, do take a look. And talking of the lovely Ian Jarvis, he did send me a note saying that there's been over 500 appeals put into the planning inspectorate for submitting fraudulent planning applications, but more on that later. Good evening. The post office scandal offers insightful learnings. Those in top positions of influence, both government and corporate, absent moral compass, are free to mete out harm to large numbers of innocent people. Having fine-tuned the art of deception, the dishonest use media to fool the public for decades. We have been given countless reasons to mistrust government, media, and my particular area of experience, healthcare establishment. Smoking, DDT, asbestos, thalidomide, to name but a few. By this point, government caring, media telling us the truth, and pharmaceutical companies there to help restore health is not a fantasy that I buy into. Before qualifying as a physiotherapist, I was taught the importance of critical thinking when appraising research, to look at empirical data, to recognise that researchers have certain beliefs and biases, will have financial incentives, and that conclusions drawn will be influenced by these factors. When a group attended Cabinet in December, wishing to present evidence regarding 5G affecting health, I was very interested as I share their concerns. Logical rationale dictates to not abandon the precautionary principle. Thank you, Councillor Luxford Vaughan, for recognising legitimate concerns with regard to 5G and, as the role obligates, for considering matters brought before Council. What is unacceptable conduct, however, is the mocking of both the Member of Public and Councillor Luxford Vaughan. The Councillor in question is operating under a belief that 5G is safe and that any claim to the contrary is nonsense. This ill-informed opinion was subsequently tweeted. If evidence contrary to the current political science is presented, let us not partake in misgendering that as conspiracy theory. Is it not long past time that we approach questions on a rational and evidential basis? A study by oncologist Leonard Hardell evidences microwave syndrome caused by 5G radiation. Symptoms generally subsided when the exposure ceased. Children and unborn babies are particularly susceptible. Having now been informed of harm, the government instruction to not refuse masks on health grounds does not absolve council or councillors from liability. It is evidentially true that companies installing the masks are using dissolved companies to obtain planning permission and claim compliance with ICNRP safety recommendations. Council has been given evidence of this. You are complicit if you do not take action on the companies who have gained approval fraudulently. 5G may be effective, but it certainly isn't safe. Council needs to consider its obligations to properly examine the evidence before approving any more 5G masts. Thank you. I know people will find this over dull, but there we are. Um, thank you very much, Karina. Um, my earlier remarks really apply. You have brought similar views to cabinet and elsewhere. I think all I can say 
that would be helpful is, um, of course, there is a respect um, personally and collectively for differences of opinion, uh, both political, practical and scientific. And you are absolutely right that views on harm do change as the evidence change and um, our, our actions as a local authority, if within our remit and responsibility should change as that evidence changes. And I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Mr Mayor. And as we discussed with Ian Jarvis, it seems very odd that all these companies are giving their safety declarations using names of companies that don't exist. If there's nothing wrong with 5G, why are they doing that? And this deception is happening all up and down the country, not just in Colchester. Also, insurance companies are refusing to insure for harms caused by EMFs. And telecommunication companies are warning investors that they will need to provision for potential lawsuits. So think what you will, but I think Karina's right to voice their concerns. Next up was Brian from the Peacekeepers. He had a bit to get off his chest to the council. Um, I've seen far too many instances where the public raise important questions and receive either no responses or answers filled with obfuscation. I presented a very simple question uh, to scrutiny meetings back. Unfortunately, despite its straightforward nature, I have been met with silence, despite reassurance that I will receive an answer. This silence persisted even after I attempted to seek a response through email. As Councillor Paul Dundas asserted, the council has no money to hold ownership overall. By extension, it is the public who fund the operations of this council. This includes publicly funded salaries for some of the, those present tonight. It's a disservice to the public trust when basic questions are evaded, contradicting the transparency you all pledged to uphold last December. Perhaps it's time to reread the Nolan principles under which you are bound to operate, specifically your obligations to selflessness and accountability. Across the nation, there's growing concern about the gap between councils and communities, as well as our entire government system. It's now time the people will implement its own public accountability system funded by the council, as it's evident that proper oversight is needed in the decision-making process. I trust you realise that the public is not fading away. We're committed to pursuing the transparency and answers we rightly deserve. So I repeat my question, my simple question, which I would like an answer to this evening. Exactly what authority does the council or any public office holder have over members of the public? Thanks. Thank you, Mr Rees. Um, it's a philosophical question, so undoubtedly we'll be Councillor King again. Oh, well, that's a corker, Mr. Mr. Mayor. Um, we only act within the law, so the simple answer is whatever the law is, whatever the issue is, uh, we have to act in accordance with that and account for our actions. Thank you. Next up is Sir Bob Russell. He had quite a bit to get off his chest as well. Mr. Mayor, at the meeting the Council last autumn, I spoke about the Town Deal Board a quango responsible for spending of millions of pounds of taxpayers' money in Colchester. I mentioned that at its previous meeting on the 17th of August 2023, only six of the 15 members bothered to attend. At the board's last meeting on 16th of November, the minutes revealed that only four turned up. That is the equivalent of only 13 councillors attending your meeting this evening. There's just one city council on the board, the leader of the council. From January 2020 to April 2021, it was Councillor Corey, with Councillor Dundas from June 21 to April 22. Both had a 100% attendance. From May 2022, it has been Councillor King. The records show he attended five of the seven meetings. One of the projects undertaken by the Town Deal Board is Holy Trinity Church, owned by the Council. The intention is that the building will be released to Community 360, which you'll be aware has featured in several reports in the Colchester Daily Gazette this month with a revelation that the Charity Commission is showing an interest in the charity. Only a few days ago, a committee of this council discussed Community 360 and the concerns raised. MPs Will Quince and Priti Patel have both been reported in the local newspaper saying there are questions which need to be answered. What has not been reported is that the Chief Executive Officer of Community 360 is a member of the Town Deal Board. In light of some aspects of newspaper reports about Community 360, it will be interesting to see which firm gets the contracts to do the building works at Holy Trinity Church. 
Mr Mayor, I wish to place the following on public record. Be very careful, Mr Sir Bob. This is a privileged meeting. Mr Mayor, I wish to place the following on public record. For some 18 months, Councillor King was a trustee and, a, and director of Community 360. He did not register that in the member's declaration of interest, nor had he registered that he was a member of the Town Deal Board. Looking to the future, noting the poor attendance, I believe the Town Deal Board should be scrapped. In its present state, it is not fit for purpose. Ideally, matters for which the Town Deal Board is responsible should be transferred to councillors. You gathered here, the people elected to represent residents people who have democratic accountability. If government rules insist that there must be a quango, then let it be a quango whose members take that role with greater responsibility than the record shows about the current membership. Well, th thank you for that, Sir Bob. Um, I'm mulling over who would be best to respond. There's no great enthusiasm. <laughs> uh, Councillor King. I think I have to respond in the circumstances. <coughs> So let's pick up the personal point. Yes, I was. It's, uh, I declared it. Uh, you're right, belatedly. Uh, that was my omission and my, uh, my apologies. But there's no secret that I was for a period, um, primarily while I was in opposition, um, uh, as a volunteer unpaid, let's say these things out loud, um, a trustee on the board of Community 360. I'll simply say it wasn't for me and I was too busy and I became leader of the council and I stepped away in 22. Um, that's my position, uh, Sir Bob, and uh, if you want to follow that up, I'll be as frank as you need about that. Uh, in terms of the town, town deal board, I mean, my view is unchanged from the last times we've spoken about this, the times that we've emailed each other, um, ahead of you seeing the chair and others on the town deal board. It, you know this. It is an essential part of the mechanisms that secure funding. I wish it was otherwise, but it is what it is. As elsewhere across the country, the government mandates that we must have an independent board. Next up was Colchester resident Simon Collis, who asked something most unusual of the council. He wanted them to declare an actual real emergency rather than just, you know, one they've made up. Really important. I want a conversation. Unfortunately, I felt like it fell on cloth ears last time I spoke. And I feel one of you councillors tonight, and I don't care which party it is, I don't care. I want somebody to move forward, be brave enough, throw down the gauntlet and turn around and declare a actual housing affordable crisis. And I believe we've done an environmental um, a climate change emergency before, so why can't we actually declare a full motion from council some point in the future to declare an affordable house emergency. Following on from this brilliant idea, the Save Middle Ranges have asked there to be a nature emergency declared to save the ranges. And I have a whole list of emergencies I'm going to recommend they declare, starting with a food security emergency. Because let's face it, the only way you can get council to do anything these days is tell them it's emergency. We probably need a pothole emergency. So feel free to list your emergency ideas in the comments below and we'll see how many we can incorporate into our future visits. Until next time, take care.